All right. Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning. I know there's some still back there in the back eating. Go ahead and eat. Uh, we're going to sing our opening song. First off, all you fathers, happy Father's Day. Uh, I pray your day is blessed today. Father's Day. Y'all know that, right? All right. Um, I'm so excited that you're here this morning. We got a lot of visitors, a lot of guests with us this morning. I'm excited you're here. A lot of family um, here of, of extended family. So thank y'all for being here. I hope that you're ready to worship the Lord with much energy and, and excitement because he's worthy of all praise. And I'm coming off of kids camp for a whole week, y'all. So uh, they were excited in that place. And, and so I'm excited this morning as we come together to worship 
And again, as I said, today's Father's Day. And uh, men, we love you. We love you. And, and uh, I wanted to tell you Happy Father's Day. We got some people in the back uh, finishing up on their eating, but they got the screens back there. They're listening. They're seeing in. And so uh, we'll have them join with us in just a moment. But we wanted to um, go ahead and start this morning off with um, just uh, welcoming and then letting Jacqueline um, hand it over to her. She's got some Father's Day gifts and things that she wanted to, to give out. So, Happy Father's Day. We hope every father that is here felt so, so loved as soon as they walked into the door. If you didn't come to our breakfast this morning, guys, we're going to start making this an annual thing. So just go ahead and mark it on your calendar for next year. It was so, so much fun. So our goal for today is every man... First off, did y'all know that God made men, like, super, super special? You don't have to be a father to be super, super special. He made them with such broad shoulders. And we see you. We see all of you. There are things in your life that you go through that you have to be the strong one. And you have to be the one that is the protector, the comforter, the everything your wife needs and your kids need. Like, you... There's a lot that you do. And so today, we appreciate you. We love you, and we come alongside you. And with that said, there's a lot, as y'all can see down here. Happy Father's Day. What is in your toolbox? You may have a toolbox at home that has screwdriver, hammer, blah, 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 all the tools that <laughs> y'all, a lot of men knew that I didn't know the name to, but um, y'all may have that at home. But I want to know what's in your toolbox spiritually because if you think about it in life we all have a toolbox figuratively speaking we all have a toolbox but we all come from a lot of different experiences and there is a lot of different tools that we can bring to the table and so I just want you to be encouraged with whatever you feel like your toolbox is lacking that it's not lacking like God made you exactly in this moment, in this season in your life, he gave you the tools that you needed to have to conquer whatever it is that God has put before you. And so we have a toolbox filled with tons of practical gifts because sometimes men are hard to buy for, but they also have like a lot of just things that I hope you add to your toolbox too. And so I'm gonna ask for Ralph Bennett, he is our men's director, to come and help us, and we are gonna hand out some things from our toolbox. So the first thing we have, our practical gift, is leather, no, it's durable and flexible goat skin. Leather, goat skin, leather, I think that's the same thing. Uh, gloves, Doug Lightfoot. Come add this to your toolbox, Doug. This next thing, it's kind of funky because it's like a gift card, but there's goldfish, and so I have to explain this one to you. Okay, this gift card is for a clean vehicle for a hardworking man, but it's, I'll tell you the name in just a second, but the goldfish have to be used, okay? Because there is one thing that men can put in their toolbox is intentionality. And if you have never taken your kids, your grandkids, any kids you know, through the car wash with goldfish and act like you're swimming fishies, like swimming away from sharks, like you have to try it. And so Jared Barnett, you get to try it. Okay. We also have straps. Men are helpers, aren't they? They are always willing to lend a hand, especially if they have a truck. And so Wayne Croft, you have just got some straps. I think that's what they're called. To add to your toolbox. And I got an extension cord. We know what this is for. Lance Satterwhite, you have an extension cord. And 
And then all the men that work out in the yard, they need a hat that has this awesome, I thought it was so cool. I actually thought about you, Mr. Roy, when I bought it. Because you can put water in it, and it cools you off. And so, John Mott, your head gets to stay cool. Add that to your toolbox. somebody's wife put their name in there twice. They have a good wife. Wiley Jenkins, you have got some gorilla tape. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. And something, something special. Another man that has a good wife that put his name in there twice. Okay, we have a special one that I want you to add to your toolbox. And even if you don't win this, you can totally add to your toolbox anyway, because this one just, whoo, it just helps, helps a man out and a girl out. A date night. Take your wife on a date to Cotton Patch. Oh, you got another one for It's for Stephen Lawrence. And lastly, but not Lastly, but not leastly, I think is what you say. In East Texas, I've heard that Tractor Supply is the place to go for men. So this guy gets to take a trip to Tractor Supply. Cody Bohan. And men, everybody that just won a prize, I forgot to do this because sometimes I'm spacey, but the ultimate tool that the Lord gives us is his word. He speaks to us every single day in his word, and it amazes me. And so I forgot to give this to you. And so if y'all will come up and get this sometime before church, or Jerry will be so sweet and pass those out, uh, a Bible to each of those. And lastly, we have a toolbox. It's empty. And I have a special, special plan for this toolbox. I want this toolbox to go to the latest, per the last person, the most recent person that has gotten baptized because they have been given this like, I don't even know what to say. They have been given this clean slate with the Lord, an empty toolbox just to allow the Lord to put whatever tools in there that he would love for them to have. And so we actually have a baptism today. I don't know if y'all know this, but Grant Cox, I know you're not a father yet, but that's what you were created. No, I'm not saying that. God has special <laughs> plans for your life, and we are so, so excited for how God is moving in your life, and so I want you to take this empty toolbox and fill it with whatever you feel like the Lord is wanting you to do with your life. We will know, hey, 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 don't, don't leave me yet. We are adding your first tools into your toolbox to help you as you start your journey. Thank you guys. If y'all would stand and worship with us this morning, what better way than to run to the Father? The baptism this morning that makes it mighty awesome. So y'all sing along with us. i 
friend, so I run to the Father again and again. Father again and again and again. I hope that's what you're doing this morning is running to the Father. I know Father's Day brings up a lot of memories of your dad and uh, some of y'all don't have your dads with you anymore and I want you to know that we love you and this day's hard and some of you lost your husbands which was a father and I want you to know that we love you guys and um, we're praying for you and I want you to think about how, how much you would desire to run to him uh, if he was here with you today and I want you to think now about the Lord who's your heavenly father, who opens his arms and says, run to me, I'm here. And you have the opportunity to be embraced by him. So I just want y'all to keep that in mind this morning. Brant, would you come on down, brother? I'm very excited about this morning. So Brant Cox, is uh, uh, we, we had talked a while back and really just kind of walked through the gospel. He he'd, uh, went through a time where God was drawing him when he was younger and and uh, he, he told me, though, not too long ago that, that he just felt like maybe he hadn't surrendered all the way and that he, he just felt like um, he was living his own life and, and not really worried about the Lord too much at a, at a time. And the Lord was drawing him. And I walked through the gospel with him and, I, and 
it's funny because he, he was at uh, Rump's, and uh, me and another preacher were there, and he said, can I sit with y'all? I'm never going to deny that, guys. <laughs> y'all can always sit. And uh, we shared the gospel that day, and he just said, I'm just not ready to respond. And then uh, I guess it was a Wednesday night thereafter, um, he came up to me and, and said, um, I'm, I, there's nothing holding me back anymore. I want to be all in for Christ. Amen. And uh, so praise the Lord with that confession of faith and turning all in for Christ. He wants to celebrate with y'all with baptism today. So y'all help me celebrate this today.
Y'all, they've come a long way. Of course, I ain't been able to sing a lick at all, but they make up for it. I'm going to go ahead and introduce them because I hadn't introduced them in a while. We got some new people here. We got Wes Ewing on the drums. We got Clayton Conrad. I guess he's the lead. Then we got Master Toby back here. Can play anything. Then we got Lance Rogers on the steel. Then we got Sebastian on the electric. We got Trista on the keyboard. My wife Tammy on the piano. We got Natalie, Tammy, the other Tammy like that. David, and then Gracie sitting back there in the back. Her voice wasn't good this morning, so she couldn't sing with us. But, uh, and I'm Dwayne. So this is gonna be our birthday and anniversary song. Play basketball one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, Lord. We thank, we're thankful that you are our Heavenly Father on this Father's Day, God, and for all the fathers who are here. Uh, God, I just thank you so much for them and the godly influence, Lord, they have over their children. Father, I pray that you would continue that in their lives, Lord. I pray that you bless this offering and the giver. It's in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome to Friendship Baptist Church. Let's check the announcement. Join us on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Write down any questions you might have as you read through our Bible reading plan. What a great blessing to grow in the Lord and with other believers. Join us on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. in His presence. On Sunday nights, we have two focuses. One, find His presence, and two, stay there. Come join us in these special services as we seek the Lord together. June 25th, wedding shower for Brady Brownlow and Andrew Sims at 2 p.m. Come love on this sweet couple and let's watch our big God work mightily in their lives. June 27th to July 1st, Youth Camp. There will be no Wednesday night services on 629 while youth are gone to camp. July 3rd, Richmond Baby Shower at 2 p.m. Parents Shane and Natalie, 
sibling, and the great. Come help us celebrate this family's new little error coming very soon. July 31st, Family Sunday VBS Recap. Please stay and help us quickly tear down the decorations in the sanctuary. The more the hand, the quicker we can get to lunch. Join us at Dickies in Athens for lunch after teardown. August 13, Equip Conference. This is a conference for every ministry in our church. All are welcome to attend. August 14th, Family Celebration Sunday. Move Up Sunday. This is our annual Sunday with a lot to celebrate. This is also a Sunday where the service will be celebration of milestones with the new age appropriate Bibles and a time for all families to speak blessings of encouragement over their children. Want to know more about this special day? Grab a flyer at the Faith at Home wall. Hey, you guys, look at that. That's amazing. Uh-huh. Whoa, look over there. Have you guys seen anything as massive as that? Great. Those cliffs are huge. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Well, we're here. Looks like everyone else just got here, too. It's time to look up. There's more to life than what's on your screen. Go off-road on the adventure of a lifetime and experience the greatness of God's love. canyons of the southwest from a rock solid faith and discover that god is monumental yes anybody wants to help out with vbs miss charlotte wave your hand real big miss charlotte just say hey miss charlotte i'd love to work with VBS this year, and she'll plug you in somewhere and see what your talents are and help you out. So just want to put that out. All right, we're not going to have our kids come forward today. I want you to stay where you are. The youngins, so this is uh, all my kids in here. I want you to turn and look at your daddy and say Happy Father's Day. Now look at him and say, I love you, daddy. <laughs> love you too, baby. All right, now all my kindergarten and under, go with them to the back for Children's Church. All the kindergarten under, you are dismissed in here. Back here. Oh, thank you, Sam. This way, bud, this way. This way. And so all the kiddos that are going to Children's Church, and then if anybody's left in here that wants the binder, don't forget that we have those up here. And I want to also tell you, daddies, what you kiddos love so much. Um, if you haven't had, this is a weird thing to say, but if you haven't had a chance to go to the male's bathroom yet, go to the male's bathroom. <laughs> And uh, look around, because those are things that all of your women in your life, the women of our church, had said about you men. And so it's just covered from top to bottom with little sayings that you're loved and you're, that you're appreciated and just different things. It just, um, I don't know, sometimes it's nice to hear those things. And so uh, y'all go in and look at those. All right. Well, if you would, I'm going to ask you to stand and worship with us again. We used to sing this off a CD, but they all figured out how to play it, so we're going to play it and sing it.
Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest thing, but only trust in Jesus' name. Christ Father God, thank you for being Lord of all, God. Lord, I pray those are not just lyrics we sing, though. I pray that it's reality we live, Lord. Lord, that in our life, as we look at it today, that we would see you as Lord. Lord of our finances, Lord of our freedom, Lord of our hobbies, Lord of our career, Lord of our family, that you would be Lord of all, God. For we know that every knee and every tongue will confess, every knee will bow to your name, God. And so why not just go ahead and bring everything under your lordship. Help us surrender, Lord. Help us surrender and submit to you today. God, help us lean in to you, to be known by you and to love you and to be loved by you, Lord. Lord, when we see who you are and what you've done, it only makes sense to just fold everything in and say, I'm yours and yours completely. But God, be our Lord today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Praise the Lord. If you're visiting, like I said, we have a lot of guests here today. If you're a guest here, this is your first time here, I just want to go ahead and just pause for a second and say welcome. Not only welcome to our church, but welcome to a great movement of God. We are going three and a half months, and I'm not kidding. This isn't just something a preacher is getting up here and saying. I'm talking three and a half months of revival spirit where the spirit of God has fallen on our church. And so welcome to a great movement of God this morning. I hope you, yeah, praise the Lord. I hope you're here excited to experience him. 
I know I am. We're going to be in Acts this morning. You can turn to Acts, and as you're turning to Acts, chapter 22 is where we're going to be at. Um, I want to tell you, you know, I, I was thinking Father's Day, and we're continuing our series going through the book of Acts, and I was thinking with Father's Day, how do I start this morning? What, 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 where do I want to begin? And I got to thinking, you know what, why not begin this morning with a simple good manly story, or, or think about good manly stories. You know, it's, it's good. I, I just love a good man story. You all with me? Am I the only one? There we go. Miss Trish loves a good man story. All right. <laughs> I just love them. I love, I love the manliness and the, 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 the just, just going in there and tackling things, you know, and I, I was thinking about some of them. I think that's why Top Gun, the Maverick, is so popular right now because it's just a non-agenda, action-packed man movie, and, and I think we like that. I'm tired of all the agendas. You all with me? There's just agendas in everything. Um, but you think about good man stories. What's your favorite man story? Is it Russell Crowe as Maximus and Gladiator? You know where he works his way up and he's trying to, to, to take out everybody. Or you think about um, maybe uh, the Scottish rebel, uh, William Wallace. He has that big speech, right, in Braveheart. And he's looking at him. He says, you men don't want to regret this moment. You don't want to be lying on your bed and, and think this. He says, you don't want to come back to this moment. He says, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom, right? It's a good man story, right? Or what about... Um, Sylvester Stallone and Rambo or Rocky Balboa, you know, those are good stories. Or John Wayne as Rooster Cogburn, you know, and True Grit. There it is. I knew, I knew it. I knew it. Or uh, even James Arnes as Matt Dillon in Gunsmoke. I mean, I just love some Gunsmoke and Matt Dillon. He's just, he's just the man, you know. Talking about clean shows. <laughs> yeah, I, we could go back to some Gunsmoke, y'all. I thought about some more, though, and I could tell you many, 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 but one of my favorites as a movie with Tom Hanks, Vin Diesel, and Matt Damon. And uh, do y'all know what it is yet? Saving Private Ryan. That's right, Eddie. That's right. The movie starts off with an elderly veteran walking through a cemetery, right? And he comes to this grave, and he, he's overwhelmed with emotion. And then at that point, he starts recalling all of this war story. And so you start to see the story of where there's four brothers, and three of them die on the same day, and they're going to have to let the mother know. And they say, we're not going to let this fourth one die, right? Which is Private Ryan. And so they put together a crew, and, and, and Captain Miller's the one that, that's in charge of this crew. It's Tom Hanks. And, and he, he, he gets this whole crew, and they go to, find, save it, or go to find Private Ryan to save him, to send him home so that he could have a, uh, his mom could have one of her boys, really, is kind of where it comes. And you get to this whole journey. It's, it's tremendously hard, right? It's a tough, tough time they have. One thing after another after another. But the very end of it, you have a morally wounded Miller, right? He's, he's, he's dying. He's there after all of the, uh, the, the, they're about to come through this. But he's, he's wounded and he's dying. And he looks at Ryan and he says with his last words, earn this. And he's like, what? Earn it. Earn it. And he's referencing the fact that all these men had given their lives so that he could go home. He says, earn it. I just always love that story of sacrifice, and, and truthfully, I got to thinking about it this week, and don't that remind you of the gospel a little bit? Think about it. I mean, Christ left heaven to seek and save us. He had a mission to save us, and then he laid his own life down so that we could live, and he tells us that as we receive this gift, it is a gift, it's a free gift of grace, but he says as you receive it, work. Work for it. Work out your salvation, he says. Persevere to the end. In other words, earn it in a sense. Not that we are to earn salvation, but if God has so freely given it to us, we should be like Private Ryan at the end of the movie. who's overwhelmed, and he says, I hope I earned it. As he stands at the grave of Miller, he says, I hope I earned it. I hope one day we'll get to think back and say, God, I know I didn't earn it, but I hope I, I lived as best as I could knowing that the gospel was freely given to me, and I ran towards you with all that I had. That song, Run to the Father, I pray that's what we can look back in that day and say, I ran towards you. So there's all these man stories. There's another one that's often overlooked, and it tells of a story of a man who is betrayed from his own people. And he practically goes against an entire empire by himself. 
And in this journey, there's some treacherous stuff that happens. There's riots that happens. He's, he's stoned at different times. There's imprisonment that happens. There's shipwrecks that happens. There's snake bites that happen. I mean, you call it, it's there. It's all over the place. And this story is recorded in Acts. But before we even get to the Acts part of this story, it begins even before that with the words of our Lord. And Jesus said these words, and I'll have these on the screen because I know you're in Acts 22. Matthew 10, though. Verse 16 says this, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. And you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. I love that. That's going to set the stage, y'all, of what we're going to read in Acts. Jesus had already said this was going to happen. And so what we just read is the synopsis. It's the cliff notes of the rest of Acts. And so when we think about it, it's, it's, it's such a... Just crazy story, and I want us to walk through this narrative today. But before we even get to Acts 22, I want you to remember back to Acts 9 when you remember there was a Saul guy there who was persecuting Christians, and he saved miraculously and graciously the, the Damascus Road experience. The light comes down, and, and he's saved. Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? And, and, and so he, he comes to know Christ, and then at the same time, they, God tells a disciple named Ananias to go meet Saul. And you all remember that uh, kind of exchange. Saul, or Ananias says, God, um, are you sure? That's the Saul guy that's been... Killing everybody. It's caused much harm to your saints. Are you sure? And, 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 and God says, yeah, I'm sure. Because I don't think we ever have to really ask God if he's sure. <laughs> he's sure. He says, go to him. And here's his response. Here's the Lord's response to Ananias. In Acts 9, 15, it says, But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel. Paul, Saul here, Paul, is a chosen vessel of mine. To bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. So you all know the rest of the story. Ananias goes and meets up with Saul. And Saul gets baptized right there. He turns his life to Christ. And so what we're going to read today is a fulfillment of our Lord's words through a good man story. It's one of them good stories. But there's a twist here. While Paul's a tough man and it's a really good narrative here, this story's not really all about what Paul could do. This story was about what Christ could do in him. And that's what makes it an even better story, y'all. And so I want to look at three different ways this is true, this good man story, really being Christ here is the good man. And, and we'll see how he works through Paul. And so the first point I have for us this morning is, the Lord stood by him. The Lord stood by him. So you pick up the narrative where we left off last week, and, and we learned something last week. We learned that when things may seem terribly wrong, God works them out in exactly the right way. And I don't know about you guys, but God spoke to me through that. And he spoke to several of y'all because there's things that has happened this week that has really off-kiltered us. Not just one, not just two, three or four of y'all sitting in this room today has had some emergencies come up, some terrible things happen. And it was so wonderful to see how God said, when things may seem terribly wrong, I'll work them out in exactly the right way. And how it, it may not make sense where he leads us always, but following him there always makes sense. That was a great comfort from the Lord for me, and I know for many of y'all. Thank you, Lord, for the word. We go back to where he was. He finally arrives in Jerusalem. He gets purified with these other Jews. He's up in the temple spending that time of purification because of the whole law controversy. And as he's there, there's some Jewish Asians or Asian Jews there from Asia. And they uh, um, get really upset with him and start um, slandering really is what happens here. And so they pick him up. You remember, and they're beating him and they're, they're going through this. And, and the commander gets involved. He says, they're going to kill this man. The commander comes, he gets involved, he takes him to the barracks, and as he's going up the stairs, he couldn't even be, um, go up the stairs, they carried him up the stairs, and then he spoke. 
Remember, he said, can I speak to him? That's where we ended last week was, was he spoke to them and he, and he talked to them about, about really that he was a Jew. However, he met Jesus and the same hope that y'all have is the same hope I have, but I know it's been fulfilled. And that's what he's sharing with these people. However, he says God told him to go to the Gentiles. And at that point, there was an interruption. They stopped listening. And that's where we pick up today. If you're with me, say amen. We got lots of scriptures today. Y'all got to stay with me, y'all. Father God, I just pray that you help us uh, just walk through this scripture today boldly, knowing it's your word, but also hearing you, God. May it be your speed that we walk through this, God, because I want to hear you. I want to know you more. I want to see what you did for Paul, and I want to see how, how Lord, that, that is the same thing you do for us, and how you stood by him, how you stand by us, Lord. So help us understand this today. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Acts 22, verse 22 and they listened to him until this word. And then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw up dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought back into the barracks. And he said that he should be examined under scourging. Y'all remember the words of Jesus? They would take you and give you to councils and they would scourge you. Look what's happening with Paul. He'd be examined under scourging so that he might know why they shouted so against him. And as they bound him with tongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care of what you do. This man's a Roman. And the commander came and said to him, tell me, are you really a Roman? And he said, yes. And the commander answered and said, with a large sum of money, I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, well, I was born with this citizenship. And verse 29 says, then immediately they arose. They, they who, those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. And the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. So again, guys. Catch what's going on here. I mean, Paul just drops a bomb on them. I mean, they're ready to, to go through this, get this thing figured out, sweep it under the rug kind of thing. He says, y'all know I'm a Roman citizen. <laughs> it's illegal. It's a big deal. The Roman Empire had this power over them and, and had these, these laws. And so, so it was a big deal for this not to happen. And they had already walked through and went further than they should. And so he drops this, this kind of big bomb on them here. And remember, again, the, the, the plot line is the same thing Jesus said. They'll deliver you to councils and scourge you. For my name's sake, you'll go before governors and kings. So keep that in mind as we keep reading. So the Jews were about to kill Paul. And so Lysias, that's the Roman commander here. He gets involved, he takes him and brings him back. And so then look at what happens next, though. Chapter 22, verse 30. If you're there, say amen. The next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he released him from his bonds and commanded the chief priests and all their councils to appear and brought Paul and set him before them. Then Paul, chapter 23, verse 1, then Paul, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. And then Paul said, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. <laughs> I told you it's a man story, guys. Strike you, you whitewashed wall, for you sit to judge me according to the law, and you do command me to... He says, you, you judge me according to the law, and do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? And those who stood by, do you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I didn't know, brother, that he was the high priest, for it is written, you shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. So again, Paul gets a little feisty here. But, I mean, can you blame him? He's done been beat to where he can't walk. I would have pulled the Roman card a long time ago, right? He's done been beat. He's done been through this. He's done walked through this. And at this point, he finally says, guys, you all know I'm Roman. He said, okay, let's back up for a second. But for it to go through the proper chains, the commander wants to know really what's going on. So he brings them back in a trial state almost with the Jewish leaders there. And, 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 and what Paul calls him, a whitewashed wall. I read that the very first time. I'm like, man, that can't be good. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it can't be good, right? Um, but I looked into it, and Jesus used the same word. Jesus called the Pharisees white, a whitewashed tomb. And what he said was, guys, you're a bunch of hypocrites. He says, you're so beautiful and articulate on the outside like a whitewashed tomb, but inside remains dead bones and uncleanliness. So Paul says, you're a hypocrite. 
You're sitting here judging me according to the law, but breaking the law as you strike me. Paul also noticed, I'm going to read all the verses. I'm just going to summarize some of it. Paul notices that there are Pharisees and Sadducees here. And so Paul starts, he pulls a slick one, and he starts talking about the hope of the resurrection, which the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection, they didn't believe in the spirits, or they didn't believe in angels. And so this was a big deal for Paul as he starts talking about the hope of the resurrection because what happens is all of a sudden the Pharisees are listening. They're like, hmm, maybe this guy's got a point. And the Sadducees are like, this guy's talking about resurrection. And so this division starts happening. And the Pharisees are saying, okay, maybe there's something more to this. Maybe he has heard from an angel. And so Paul is walking through this. He sees this this big stir up happening. And so then we get to verse 10 of chapter 23. Acts 23, verse 10, it says, Now when there arose a great dissension because of what Paul just said, the commander, fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and and bring him into the barracks. But the next day is what I believe is so important, y'all. So if you're at chapter 23, verse 11, say amen. But the following night, the Lord stood by him, by Paul, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. Don't miss this, guys. Paul's going through this mass chaos. And the Lord comes and stands near him. Don't miss the language. Paul could have easily said, the Lord spoke to me and encouraged me. The the Lord shared this. The Lord whispered on my heart. The Lord gave me this understanding. No, he says, the Lord stood by me. Remember the point that we're at. The Lord stood by him and the Lord can stand by you as well. This showed Paul two things. One, that he was right where God wanted him. When you're in the midst of chaos and trouble and storms and all the different things that happen, isn't it very quick to, to, aren't you very quick to say, I don't know if I'm where God wants me to be. You know, that's my first thought. The moment something goes bad, it's like, oh God, I misheard you. I had to. You wouldn't be putting me through this. That's not the case, though. He says, I I stand right beside you. So he was right where he was supposed to be, but not only supposed to be, he was with him. I don't know what y'all are going through, and maybe you're in one of those moments where you're in the midst of a mess, and you're thinking, I don't know if I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Maybe I made a wrong decision. I want you to hear the Lord stand beside you and tell you, be of good cheer. I'm with you. As I was with you in the midst of all of this mess before, and I've brought you through it, I'm in the midst of this with you today. So we see... Right after that, while the Lord stood by him, there was Jews who stood against him. Immediately, 40 Jews, and get this, guys, I told you it's a man's story. 40 Jews legitimately say, I'm vowing not to eat another bite or drink another drink until I kill Paul. What? 40, I mean, they're upset, right? 40 of them say, I'm not going to eat or drink until Paul is dead, until I kill him. And so this is going on. They get this whole plot together, and Paul's nephew finds out about it, tells the commander, and here's the commander's response. Chapter 23, verse 23. Go to chapter 23, verse 23. If you're there, say amen. And he called for two centurions, saying, Prepare 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night, and provide mounts to set Paul on, and bring him safely to Felix, the governor. Remember Jesus' words that you'll be brought before governors and kings. Now he's brought before Felix the governor, and he wrote, so Lysias wrote a letter in the following manner. Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor Felix, greetings. This man, Paul, was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. Coming with the troops, I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but had nothing charged against him deserving death or chains. And when it was told me that the Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers to state before you their charges against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him in the night to Antipatris. And the next day they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the barracks. And when they came to Caesarea and he had delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked, what province are you from? And he said, from Cilicia. And he said, I will hear you when your accusers have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's patrolium. 
Praetorium. Praetorium. And catch this, guys. Forty of them are against him, vowing not to eat or drink a thing until he, he's dead. They're, they're plotting. They're getting this all figured out. And so the commander says, okay, I got you. It may sound like a little overkill, but he gets 470 soldiers. And they take him in the night to Felix. And so this is a big deal. Sometimes we read this and just think, okay, this is just some little trial going on. 470 soldiers are bringing him to the governor. And so this is because he's a Roman citizen. And so they all get there. And then what happens is there's a lawyer that comes named Tertullus. And so uh, lawyers aren't just in our day. They've been around since the beginning of time. You all realize that, right? So here's a lawyer here, and he's smooth. He's a smooth talker. So chapter 24, verse 2, he says, And when he was called upon, Tertullius began his accusation, saying, Seeing that though you were enjoyed great peace and prosperity in being brought to this nation by your foresight, we accept it always in all places, most noble Felix. With all thanksgiving, nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. You all catch what he's doing, right? saying, you're so wonderful, you're so good, you, you, you honor your name, I'm so sorry to be in front of you, this shouldn't even be brought to you, but your commander kind of got involved, and so, so can you just hear me out, and he walks through that, he says, he says, just hear me out, but then comes the start of Paul's defenses, and I want you to remember Jesus' words once again, beware of men, they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But listen to what it says next. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how you should speak, for it will be given to you in the hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. That leads me to the second point here. Not only does the Lord stand by us, He speaks for us. He speaks for us. Remember this as Paul goes through this. So, Paul's in front of Felix now, and here's Paul's answer. It says in chapter 24, verse 10, Then Paul, after governor, had nodded him to speak, answered, And as much as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do more cheerfully answer for myself, because you may ascertain that it is not more than twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem, and there neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone or inciting a crowd in the synagogue and city, nor can they prove the things which they now accuse me. Paul says, Governor Felix, in all due respect, this is junk. This is, this is all lies. He goes on and says, but this I confess to you. I'll tell you what this is really about, in other words. This I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. You guys hear what he does? He says, this may sound like it's all about what they're making it, but this is really about one thing. I worship God. I'm a Christian who believes in the God of my fathers. And, and he calls them out and, and says, this is what it is. I believe in God. And something interesting happens. Felix stalls. He says, oh, Claudius is going to need to come. And he stalls. And for two years, him and his wife come and visit Paul. And they ask him concerning things of the faith. For two years, Paul talked to him, it says in the scripture, about righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. And I read that the first time and I thought, okay guys, what is, why would Paul go there? Righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. What, what sense does that really make? And then I got to thinking, you know what, this is, this is a gospel presentation. Just like we have the three circles, or share Jesus without fear, or, or the Romans road, or whatever we have. This is what Paul used. He called it the three tiers, right? Righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. He would talk about righteousness and how God is righteous and we are not. How God's holy and we are not. And, and the only way that we can become righteous is by Jesus who died a death on a cross and substituted himself. That not only would he take our sin, but we would take his righteousness. And then the self-control, the fact that we are so imprisoned by our sinful flesh that we will never be able to be righteous apart from Christ. However, when we surrender to Christ, the Holy Spirit gives us the fruit of the Spirit, and part of that is called self-control. And then judgment to come. Don't forget Jesus will return. This time he comes to seek and save the lost, but there's a time coming when he'll seek and judge the lost. Two years, Felix never responded. He let fear and power and greed and his own safety get in the way of responding to the gospel. Let me just ask you all something. What is in your way of responding to the gospel? 
as you've been hearing week after week after week after week, God's goodness and his grace and, and, and his, 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 his sacrifice, what is it in your life this morning that's prohibiting you from responding to the gospel? You're playing around with it for two years. Felix played around with it. Yet there was something hindering him. Felix then is replaced by Festus in Acts 25. And Festus is only on the job by three days. And they're already coming to him saying, we still want Paul dead. And so then he goes about the whole trial. But then King Agrippa comes to town to visit Festus. And while Festus has him there, he says, King, I need you to help me out with something. He says, there's a guy named Paul. He talks about a Jesus who died and he's raised again. And and the people are so upset. But as I've looked into it, there's nothing deserving death or chains. I don't understand, King. Can you help me? And so then they come all together again. And there's another time where, where Agrippa asked Paul to speak. And this is chapter 26. Verse 2, he says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I'm accused by the Jews. Especially because you are an expert in all customs, questions, and have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. And then he's going to walk through his youth. He walks through his testimony with Damascus Road. But then he gets to his purpose. And here's what he says in Acts 26, 16. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both the things which you have seen and things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles, and I now send you to open their eyes in order for them to go from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, from, uh, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith. And he goes through and At the end of that, he says, he looks at King Agrippa. And so not only is he sharing his testimony, I want you all to catch what's going on here. He's he's preaching that your eyes would be open, that you would go from darkness to light, that you would receive forgiveness and inheritance like I have, that you would go from the power of Satan to the power of God. And he looks at Agrippa, King Agrippa, and he says, you believe me, don't you? You believe me. And King Agrippa says, I am almost persuaded to be a Christian. I am almost persuaded to be a Christian. I'm just going to stick with the first two points today. He stood by him and he spoke for him. Third point, he sustained him. But I want you to catch what happened here. Paul is fulfilling the very purpose that God had for him. Sharing the gospel to councils, governors, kings, and eventually to Caesar himself. That same gospel is the gospel that is shared to you today. The same one of righteousness, self-control, and a judgment to come. You sit here today in the same place. If you are apart from Christ, you lack righteousness And you'll never be able to fulfill that. You'll never be able to control and make the right decisions. And you will face a judgment that splits hell wide open. And I want you to hear me. Please don't be a Felix. A Felix that that, that entertains it for two whole years. That comes and comes and comes. He kept coming to Paul. But he never responds because of how everyone else would think about it. I believe there's times that we in this very room sit here and we hesitate to respond to the gospel because of the way our family would think about it, because of the way that someone else would look at me, because of the way that I think and supposed to have everything together and they would know that I don't. Guys, listen to me. Don't be a Felix and split hell wide open because you're worried about what somebody else thinks. Respond to the gospel and surely enough, don't be an Agrippa. Who, who says, I'm almost persuaded. Guys, for the last three and a half months, God has showered his grace and his power and his spirit on this place. Don't you dare walk out of here saying, I've almost been persuaded. I've seen it week after week after week. I felt his drawing. I felt his movement. And I was almost persuaded. Almost will split hell wide open as well. Paul says, don't only be almost, but altogether as I am without change. 
Guys, respond to the gospel that there is a Lord that loved you, left heaven, and died a death on a cross so that his righteousness could be placed on you and your sins could be placed on him. And through the resurrection, he defeated that, and he simply says, I want to be your Lord. Surrender to me. Give me your life. And you would be, if you understood it, you would be just like Ryan at the end of that movie. Overwhelmed and so thankful for the sacrifice that you would move as that salt to the fire for me. But the good news is, is you don't have to earn it. It's a gift for you. Father God, Lord, I love you. And I come before you today, God, just asking that you would move miraculously, God. Lord, that you would show your strength and your wisdom and your discernment, God. Lord, and that the spirit that has been falling faithfully week after week would fall today. Lord, I pray that that today being Father's Day, Lord, we would set everything aside and look to the Heavenly Father and really ask, are you our Father? Because we can say we're sons and daughters of God, but the truth is, is, is if we've not been adopted by the Spirit, and that the Spirit give us a new heart and surrender our lives to you, then, 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 then we're prodigals. God, may we come to you. Lord, help us not be Felix who entertains it today. Help us not be Agrippa who says, oh, most. But may we surrender today in the name of Christ. Help us, Lord. Help us respond to you. Lord, there's people in here right now that are thinking in their mind, I don't really know what this means. Lord, would you just show them in this very moment that all it is is the Spirit of God falling and them simply saying, yes, Lord. Of course we count the cost. Of course we recognize that that, that's my life I'm giving over, that I die to self. But God, when we understand who you are, it only makes sense. When we understand the gift you've given, it only makes sense. So show us today, Lord. Help us respond to the gospel. Maybe that's through coming to Christ for the very first time. Maybe it's simply saying, I've drifted and and Lord, take me back. Or maybe it's saying, I need to be baptized. Or I need to join this fellowship. Would you help us today respond in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
God is so good, isn't he, church? Macy, you come here, sweet girl. So Macy, uh, this week at kids camp, um, it was just the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, uh, just walking through and, and, and hearing the, the word of God day after day and worshiping. There was a lot of energy and a lot of fun too, but I'm telling you, um, the gospel was presented. And I think it was, uh, was it Thursday night? I think it was Thursday night. As y'all were praying, I asked y'all to be praying that God would move. Thursday night, the Lord moved on Macy's heart. And uh, he'd been drawing her. He even drew her at a younger age. But, but this week, she said it, it, she recognized that, that she needed to surrender to God. And she needed to make him Lord of her life. And uh, it was so sweet. And, and I just, um, Lacey uh, had, had walked through with her. And it was the very, Lacey said that I just, this first time walking someone through the gospel and letting them respond. And so, guys, that's exciting. I want us all to have that excitement of seeing people come to Christ. And I'm so thankful for the Lord's movement. What I want to share with you is next, is it next Sunday? Yes, next Sunday, um, Macy's going to be getting baptized and officially joining our church as a member. And so, praise the Lord. <laughs> I need a motion for that. All right, uh, Lance Satterwise giving me a motion. Everybody else say amen. That's amen. in favor. Amen. All right, welcome to the family. Y'all come up and say something encouraging to her as we leave. And uh, guys, I also wanted to share from the diocese. Uh, um, I put on the prayer chain some different things going on. He wanted me to share. Rick did. Um, he appreciates y'all's prayer so much uh, this week and watching God move through that. And I also heard that from someone else. Who was it that needed me to share? Yes, the Rogers. And uh, with Kathy's dad, came through surgeries in rehab in Palestine. And so I just want to take time to thank y'all for your prayers um, and, and walking through faithfully with our church. And Sean? Father God, we just come before the throne of grace, God, thanking you for your day in your house, God, and that you are our Heavenly Father, God. And with that comes a promise of comfort, Lord, comes a promise of encouragement and that you are um, our God. And so, Lord, I, I, I pray for um, the sister that Sean has talked about, Misty, Lord, and I just lift her up to you, God, and that your hand would, would um, be supernatural upon her, Lord. Lord, that she would feel your presence and she would um, grasp your, your healing, Lord. God, we, we uh, just come uh, before you and lift up Sean, too, as he struggles and, and hurts and grieves for that, too, God. And that we would just be a church that loves one another and, uh, and encourages one another. Lord, I praise you for being our God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, may we recognize you stand beside us and you speak for us and you sustain us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.